Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back. Today I have kind of a collective haul and I thought it was kind of funny that I'm posting this kind of in the middle of Sephora VIB sale time and you're probably going to be seeing a ton of like VIB sale hauls, but ironically I didn't end up shopping the VIB sale this year. I mean, there's still time, but I actually have two things that I purchased that you'll see in this haul that are from Sephora or sold at Sephora, let me clarify, but I got at a better discount than the VIB sale. This is kind of like a random collective haul. We have makeup, fashion, skincare, so let's go ahead now and hop into it. All right, first, let's talk about this bag. This is from Angela Warren. You guys know how much I love this brand. I've talked about them many times before on my channel, and they're actually rebranding, and they sent me a new bag, which I'm so excited about. So this is not sponsored. I wanna make that clear from the beginning, but this is called the Hamilton Satchel, and like I said, they are rebranding, so you'll start to see this red piece on the side of their bags. It says AR on one side, and then you flip it over, and it has the torch to represent their mission, and their, their rebranding is all about being like rebellious in the fashion industry. Like I said, they're a vegan leather handbag company. Their products are ethically produced, so it's kind of going against the grain of what is commonly seen in the fashion industry, and I feel like their morals are so important to them, so the idea that they're rebranding around that I thought was really special. And I actually wore this bag. I'm gonna pop a photo up from a couple days ago. I went to lunch and wore this bag, and I wore it with the handle. So I actually latched this on because I had more of a casual outfit going on, and I felt like that kind of dressed it down a little bit. But I feel like the cool thing about this bag is for me, it's an instant outfit maker. Like I was just wearing some jeans and a cardigan, but you throw this on and everything looks put together. And the day that you're seeing this video, not the day I'm filming it, but the day it's going live is my birthday. And we're going out for a nice birthday dinner tonight with uh, my boyfriend and I. And I'm so excited to take the handle off and wear it a little more dressy like this. So I'm gonna leave that link down below. Congratulations to Angela Roy for rebranding. I think that's so exciting. But let's go ahead now and talk about some makeup items. So first, let's talk about something that could have been purchased at Sephora during the sale, but I got it for a way better price. This is the Bare Minerals Foundation and I purchased the matte shade. I bought this at Marshalls. You guys, I have been wanting this for so long. I do, I wanna say I like powder foundations, but I haven't tried too, too many. Right now in my collection, I just have the Pure Foundation, their powder foundation. It's amazing, one of my favorite foundations. So I'm really hoping that I love this one. If you guys remember, it was either one year ago or two years ago, like a while ago, I made a, a purchase from Sephora and I purchased this, but I ended up returning it because the shade was not the right shade for me. And I was just going to exchange it, but the times that I had worn it, even with the terrible shade match, I felt like it was just a little bit too glowy on the skin and a lot of you guys recommended that I try the matte version. So I was just at Marshalls and they had this one. This is the shade Light 08 and it's the matte version. I haven't even opened this yet. Let's see. By the way, this was $7.99 which I could have bought it at Sephora for the original price of $30 and then gotten a little bit of a discount on it but... I'd rather get it for seven, well, eight. I'm a little bit nervous about the shade match. <laughs> I was trying to decide if this was gonna be too dark for me. It was weird though, because I was looking at some of the other colors that were, uh, no, this might be, this might be slightly too dark for me, but it'll just be a self-tanning shade. Actually, I think that'll be a decent match. I don't know how well you can see that. It's just a little powder on my hand. But but when I was looking through the shades, there were some that were higher numbers or lower numbers, I guess, but they looked darker. So I was getting confused. I know the undertone was varying, but for some reason, this one seemed like it would be the best match. So I'm gonna let you guys know what I think of this. Do any of you guys use Bare Minerals? I know that years ago, this was like the most hyped up foundation, but I don't hear a lot of buzz about this anymore. I know some people, if, like I feel like if you love Bare Minerals foundations, you love Bare Minerals foundations, but I also feel like a lot of, a lot of people don't. So we'll see. I'm, I'm excited to test that out. Another thing I got from Marshalls is a makeup eraser. So if you've never heard of this, it's similar to those face halos that I reviewed recently. It's essentially a product that you're supposed to be able to get wet and remove your makeup without using cleanser. So just this towel is supposed to remove it on its own. Now, this was on sale at Marshalls. You guys got this for $4. Now, it's not the full size. This is the mini, but I feel like for me, it's all the same thing. I'm just 
going to use one to remove it. So let's see how many this mini actually is. Now, the full size is about $20, and the mini, this is not that small. I do not mind. So this is the mini. This would normally retail for $12. Like I said, it was on sale at Marshall's. I'm not sure what they were selling it for before then, but I feel like this is probably the equivalent of the size of the face halos anyways, because the face halos are not quite... Actually, this might even be a little bit bigger than the face halo because it's longer. So I'm excited to try this out, see how they compare. Now, you guys are probably like, wait a minute, Kelly. You said in your review video that you like it. It's a good, effective product, but you don't see yourself using it consistently. And I didn't previously because, again, in my skincare routine, I like double cleansing with an oil cleanser and then a gel-based cleanser. That's just what works for me, and I like to use that method. But the reason I'm starting to use these kind of products and the reason I was like, I should really get a backup and try the makeup eraser. I joined a gym last week, okay? I'm pretty proud of myself. And before I go to the gym, I don't want to do a full double cleanse and totally remove my makeup. I mean, I want to totally remove it, but I don't want to do my skincare routine because I'm about to go to the gym, but I don't want to wear makeup. And I know a couple of you guys commented that that's how you use these type of products you use them for when you're going to the gym and you wanna take your makeup off. And then when you get home from the gym is your full skincare routine. So that's why I've started using my face halos even more. And I'm like, well, it wouldn't hurt to have an additional product like this. So I'm gonna let you guys know what I think. Let me know if you'd like a video about that. Maybe I could do like face halo versus makeup eraser. I don't know if there'd be a lot of interest in that. Let me know. So one more makeup item. I used up my CoverGirl Lash Blast Primer maybe one or two empties videos ago and you guys know how much I love that and I've been without a lash primer and I don't mind not having a lash primer because I feel like it is really that extra step and I feel like doing my lashes has been faster without one but I've kind of missed it. Once you get used to having that much length and volume from your lashes it's hard to go back to just using a mascara. So I was gonna pick up another of my CoverGirl but because I have a YouTube channel, I felt obligated to get a new one because I feel like it's just more valuable for me to have knowledge of multiple formulas versus rebuying the same one. So if I wasn't on YouTube, I'm going to be honest, I would have just repurchased the CoverGirl because I'm obsessed with it. But I bought this Essence one because I want to see how it compares. This is their Volume Booster Lash Primer. You guys, I don't like this. I mean, I don't know. I want to try it with a few more mascaras because right now I've only tried it with the mascara that I currently have open, which is the Ciate London Wonderland mascara. So maybe those two formulas just aren't vibing together. But when I use this, I do get a lot of volume. I do get a good amount of length, but my lashes are so clumpy. Like all my lashes stick together, which is why I loved the CoverGirl one because that separated them so much. I could take a bad mascara and pair it with my CoverGirl primer and it made it perform so much better. It separated and lengthened my lashes just by using the primer. And with this, I almost have the opposite. I feel like my lashes are getting really clumped together from this. And then once I go ahead and add in the mascara, there's just no combing through it. So let me clarify, I'm exaggerating, okay? I'm exaggerating to explain my point. It's not that bad, but that's kind of what's happening for me. So I'm not loving it on the level that I was loving my CoverGirl one, but again, I'm gonna keep playing with it. I've only used it about three times now, maybe four, and I wanna try it with different mascara formulations and see if maybe different combinations would work a little bit better. All right, now, like I said, the day that this video goes live is my birthday, and I decided to get myself a little treat yourself birthday present, so I actually purchased the earrings that I'm wearing in my second holes. But you guys, I'm thinking I might be regretting it. So that's kind of why I wanted to mention it in this video because it's a popular brand. So I bought these little studs from Majuri and let me give you some background on my skin. I have very sensitive skin. I'm allergic to nickel. And actually as a child, my allergy was quite severe. I couldn't even wear jeans like a normal child without putting like a band-aid or something over the rivet of the jeans or my entire stomach would break out in a rash, like itchy, painful. As I've gotten older, I've, I'm still sensitive to a lot of different types of metals that contain nickel, but it hasn't been as severe as that. However, 
my second holes have really been bothering me i've only had them pierced for a year which really is enough time for it to heal but they're they didn't i don't know i have earrings that a couple months ago i could wear in these holes and they wouldn't really bother me but lately my ears have been this is a little tmi it's just like getting flaky and gross and actually the day after this video goes live i'm getting another piercing and i think while i'm in there i might talk to the piercer about this hole because I don't know, maybe it's infected. I don't know. Anyways, back to these earrings. So I purchased, I wanted to invest in a type of metal that I knew or thought wouldn't bother my ear. So I, so these are 14 karat gold studs. They're three millimeters, again, from Majuri. Did I, I said again, but did I even say that in the beginning? They're from Majuri and I wanted to try that brand. I feel like they're such an Instagram brand and I see them all over and they're recommended often. And they're kind of known for being like fine jewelry, that's supposed to be more affordable and it said on the website like these were fifty dollars and then shipping was ten dollars so they were about sixty dollars but it said on the website that at other retailers you could compare it to more like 110 or 120 dollars so but you guys my ears are still irritated by these and i don't know if it's one of two things i don't know if it's just the actual metal coming in contact with my skin that's bothering me it shouldn't be though because 14 karat gold is supposed to be like the level that isn't supposed to bother me but my other thing is because they're super tiny and they're only three millimeters they get like shoved into my ear especially when i sleep i will wake up and i'll have to like pop them back out i feel like they're about to go through my ear because they're so dainty so maybe if you're interested in these i might recommend more like these six millimeter balls that they have they're just slightly larger and these I feel like if you had any sort of gauge to your piercing, this would probably go right through them. I like how dainty they are, but it's kind of a trade-off. So I'm going to be honest, I'm kind of regretting those right now because I'm like, oh, I just spent $60 on these earrings that are still bothering me and I could have just bought cheap ones. But if anyone else has a skin like I do that's quite sensitive to different types of metal and just anything really, let me know what you wear. Do you... Are there any certain kinds? Here's the thing. I know I could get like surgical steel, but I like to wear gold in my ears. So uh, anyways, moving on to the last item I want to mention. This I got at the thrift store and I love showing my thrift store finds with you guys. And I know you guys love seeing them. So this jacket is from the brand Land's End. And you guys, this is so cute. I got this. It's just a little, it's a pretty thin jacket. I got it about two weeks ago when the weather was sort of starting to cool down, but it wasn't that cold. But at this point where I live, it's way too cold to wear just this jacket. But I thought it was so cute. It has a leopard print on it, which is pretty trendy right now. And I just have always really liked leopard print. And I feel like this is such a cute casual jacket. I've worn it with just leggings and I actually wore it on Halloween. I was a leopard, like I told you guys. And I'll pop a photo on the screen right here. It's not the best photo. Uh, we On Halloween, we were so bummed afterwards. Like We didn't even get a good photo. This was just in our bathroom before we left. Derek's not wearing his full costume yet because he had also like binoculars and whatnot, but I was a cheetah and he was like on a safari. Kind of cute, kind of cute, but then you can kind of see this jacket in action. So that was just a bit of a collective haul. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will go ahead and see you in my next video. Bye.